What I got, you can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side See life's like a beach if you find the sand And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This episode is co-produced with DoThisNext.co, where you get simple, quick wins that will immediately create big results in your life and business. And this part is the Accelerated Learning Series where top entrepreneurs share how to create big changes. And today, I'm especially excited, we have one of the top minds in Accelerated Learning, Jim Quick. He's the founder of Quick Learning, that's K-W-I-K, learning.com. He's widely recognized for the world expert in speed reading, memory improvement, brain performance, and accelerated learning. His cutting edge techniques are taught to top organizations and people such as Nike, Zappos, SpaceX, Elon Musk, Harvard, and many more. Jim, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Jeremy. Looking forward to this. And yeah, thank me- you for who's, uh, who's joining us. Me too. And I always like to include a fun fact because you do so much speaking, so many interviews. What most people, you know, some people may not know when you were, there was an interesting story about you in South America where you're hiking and you came across an indigenous tribe. Yes, that was, um, we were in Ecuador and we're in the rainforest in the Amazon there and uh, came across an indigenous tribe. We were first Western contact. Can you imagine? They never seen Westerners before. And that was quite an experience. You know, I think quick learners are uh, seekers, they're explorers, and they, they're looking for new experiences. And we learn the best when we're right on that, on that fridge, if you will, getting novelty. And, you know, by the second night, it was kind of cool. We were actually eating with them. By the third day, we were playing with their kids and, and doing a lot of fun stuff and, and shamanic experiences. And, uh, yeah, something I would definitely never forget, even if I wasn't a memory expert. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jim, to give people an idea, you know, can you describe one or a few of the amazing feats you've performed when it comes to learning and memory? Because I know I've seen the talks with you with big, you know, big group of people, just to give people an idea of what what kind of things that you can do. For, you know, really long number. So let's say they give me a 50, 60, 100 digit number, and I'll remember it words and back or you know, random words. And I tell people, I don't do this to press you, I do this to express to you what's really possible because you could do it too. Everyone who's joining us could actually do that same, same things. We just weren't taught that. We weren't taught on how to do it. We were taught this. In fact, we were, I think, believe we were taught a, more of a lie. We were taught a lie that our intelligence, our potential, our learning capabilities, our memory is fixed like your shoe size and that's absolutely not true we've discovered more about your human brain in the past 10 20 years than the previous thousand or two thousand years and what we know is that it has amazing capacity and capability to learn so when i start out when i'm on stage with a group of people what i'll do is i'll usually do some kind of memory demonstrations and uh so for example i will memorize a room full of people's names I will, they will give me a hundred words or a hundred digit number and I'll memorize those forwards and backwards. But when I'm done with it, I tell people that I don't do this to impress you. I do this to really express to you what's really possible because you could do it too. Every single person who's joining us could actually do the same things. We're just not taught how back in school. School is a great place to learn what to learn. Math, history, science, Spanish. Not, not a great place to learn how to learn. Not a lot of classes on how to listen, how to think for yourself, how to be creative how to solve problems, how to, how to read faster, how to focus and concentrate, how to remember things. I always thought that it should have been the, you know, the fourth R, reading, writing, arithmetic, and then recall or right. retention, yeah. remembering things because Socrates says there is no learning without remembering. And so if anything, if we're not taught that, we're really taught is a lie. We're taught this lie that our potential is fixed, that our intelligence, our learning, our our superpowers, if you will, is fixed like our shoe size. 
you know, that our memory is fixed, like our, our height, if you will. And it's absolutely not true. We've discovered more in the past 10, 20 years about your human brain than uh, we've discovered more but then about the brain in the past 1,000 or 2,000 years, if you will. And what we've discovered is that it's incredible. It has all this power and potential, this capability. We're just not shown how to use that. And so my, my mission and my purpose in life is to show people how to access the most important supercomputer on the planet, which is between your ears, called your brain. You know, this three pound, you know, grab this three pound matter that doesn't come with an orders manual, but it runs everything. It runs your career, it runs your business, it runs your relationships, it runs your health, it runs your habits, your routines. Everything stems from it, but we're not taught how to access it. Yeah, yeah. and you get big results with people. And so I'm wondering uh, one thing the audience can take away right now that would make the greatest immediate impact. I know you talk about speed reading, memory, and focus. Could you start with some big shortcuts in speed reading for people? Yes. Yeah, so when you're so reading is so important, right? Because leaders are readers. If you're an entrepreneur or you're you're just making things happen, you want to shake the world and such, reading is so important, first of all, because what I love about it is somebody has decades of experience they put into a book and you can sit down in an afternoon or a couple of days and you could read that book. Oh my goodness. It's like downloading decades of knowledge into days. Yeah. And that that fast tracks your your life. And so a couple of, of quick tips, if you will, is uh First of all, using a visual pacer while you read and a visual pacer to underline the words, for example, your, your finger, or a pen, a highlighter, uh, a mouse on a computer will actually boost your reading speed and focus 25 to 50%. Wow. And that's just, I mean, that's immediately. And so, and you can test it also. I don't expect anyone to believe everything I'm saying. What you're going to do is test it for yourself. Pick up a book, read for 60 seconds, count the number of lines you just read, and then pick up where you left off and just underline the words. Don't skip anything. Don't scan anything. Just underline the words. Go at, at, a, at a pace that's comfortable for you and then do another 60 seconds, count the number of lines, and you'll find that that second number is usually a lift of 25 to 50 percent. Wow. And people think, like, that's not, that's huge. You huge. Know, that's, that's, yeah. It's, here's the thing, when, we, when surveys are done in institutions and organizations and your company, let's say you're an entrepreneur or a business owner or a founder, they find that the biggest time waster is information management, information management. And they say the average person can spend four hours a day going through emails and websites and prospectus and journals and, and books and newspapers and media and keeping, keeping up to things, right? Four hours a day. If you could just double your reading speed, that's saving two hours a day. Two hours a day for somebody is a lifetime. Two hours a day over the course of a year is how many hours? Yeah. That's a, that's a lot of Huge. hours. Even just one hour a day over the course of a year is 365 hours. 365 hours, that's kind of an exponential number. If you bring it down, that's how many 40 hour work weeks? Right. It's nine. Nine yeah. 40 hour work weeks just saving one hour a day. That's two months of productivity you get back by just saving an hour a day on something called reading. And so using a visual pacer will also help you to focus better. A lot of people, they have a lot of issues with their focus and their concentration. They'll read a page in a book, they'll get to the end and just forget what they just read. And right. they'll go back and reread it, right, Jeremy? And then at the end, they still don't know what they just read because their <laughs> mind is distracted all over the place. Yeah. And so I would, I, would, I would encourage people to try a visual pacer and because your eyes are attracted to motion. And when your finger's going across the page, it's pulled through the information as opposed to your attention being pulled apart. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, is there another one like that for speed reading that you recommend? Yeah, I, I would. I mean, what something you could also do while you're doing that is if you want to, so I would recommend you test this again. So if you're going through and underlining the words, go in about, about an inch. So you don't have to start margin to margin, right? You could actually go in, you could indent, imagine going in about uh, half an inch to an inch on both sides, so that would actually help you save time also as well. One of the biggest challenges with people that read is they back skip, they regress, they go back and reread words or reread whole lines by accident, and that's where a lot of time is actually wasted. So if you want to be more productive and powerful, efficient and effective when you're reading, then you could use your visual pacer. What I would say is instead of going margin to margin, because you have this peripheral vision, right, you can see a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, then go, don't go side to side all the way, go a little bit indent mm -hmm. uh, to the to the from the left margin and then a little bit to the from the right margin that'll save even more time and it doesn't seem like a lot but this cumulative over time saves you years years of productivity mm -hmm. you'd be able to get back for yourself uh, one of the other things I would recommend to play with a little bit is practice and and try using your left hand also even for left-handed individuals I find that some of the most effective readers out there they tend to be uh, they tend to be left-handed they tend to be musically inclined 
and they also tend to be women, right? So, but one of the reasons for the musically inclined is they're also using both both hands, you know, especially if they're playing a musical instrument that requires both left and right hand. And the reason why the left hand is because you know through high school biology that one side side of your brain controls the opposite side of your body. You know, God forbid, you know, someone had head trauma or a stroke on their left side of their brain, the paralysis, if they're manifest, would be on the right side and vice versa. And we find through science, it's not just a brain-body connection. There's also a body-brain connection, if you will, that using different parts of your body actually stimulates different parts of your brain, which is really exciting. They find that you know, exercises like brushing your teeth with the opposite hand or eating with the opposite hand actually stimulates different parts of your brain, which is, uh, which is always a good thing. But the reason why using your left hand to stimulate the right side of your brain is because the left side, as you remember, and this is a gross simplification uh, you know, about uh, hemispheric uh, brain science, but the left side of your brain generally is logic, or your logical side. It's your mathematical side. It's words, language, sounds. If your left side is logical, your right side is more creative, right? It's your more imagination. It's more visualization, more, more, more emotions, if you will. And so left side, people could hear the words, but the right side, people are experiencing the words. And so by potentially using your left hand, it helps stimulate the right side of your brain, which allows you to get more comprehension out of what you're reading also as well. Yeah. And Jim, you know, I was doing research and you said that in something, you know, when I was doing the research and I started practicing that. It's something you could do right away. I started eating with my left hand yeah. just to change it up. And also, I think yeah. people will get skinnier because you just eat slower. So it's got a double effect there. But It, cr- um, it creates a consciousness, definitely. <laughs> Awareness is so important to uh, progress. But I love that. Just It, it just changes things up and it, it uh, you know, gets the brain working. What about, and again... Another thing you do is you memorize huge, you know, groups of people's names. I've seen you do it in videos. What are some shortcuts to help people if they're walking into a room, just remembering not even everyone's name, but but more people's names? More people, and that's the thing. Always, always progress, right? And so I would give people. I'm gonna just give you a number of quick tips, all right, for for you and your audience. I would say, and these are all acronyms, and I use acronyms because that's how we learned back in school. We remember things like Holmes and and Roy G. Biv for for (laughs) Seven Colors of the Rainbow. Um, Remember mom, okay? So the the mother of all this, the framework I'm using is M-O-M. And and so if you're ever forgetting anything, whether it's a name or anything, usually one of these three things is missing, okay? The first M stands for... Well, actually, let me not even say it. Let's say that there's a suitcase here, $100,000 cash for the person who just remembers the name of the next stranger they need. How many people are going to remember the next name? Everybody, Every right? Single person, because yeah. the, every single person. Because the M stands for motivation. Yeah. Motivation. It's so important in understanding why you do something. There's yeah. a great business book that, start, that says Start With Why, right, by Simon Sinek. Great book. Start With Why. And because here's the thing, what I would do is I would recommend everybody, the first thing you do is ask yourself, why do I want to remember this person's name? You know, because questions are the answer and they dictate your focus. And so use questions to your advantage. Ask yourself, why do I want to remember this person's name? Maybe it's to show the person respect. Maybe it's to practice these techniques. Maybe it's to close this sale or this create this deal or what have you. Because reasons reap results. Yeah. Reasons reap results. And that's, yeah. your, that's your tweetable, if you will. <laughs> reasons <laughs> reap results. Because if you can't come up with one reason, you're not going to remember. And motivation is key. I remember I was doing a presentation and afterwards uh, Bill Gates comes up to me, right? And he was, he was there in the audience. And we're talking about the future of education. And then we're talking about the convergence of uh, learning theory with technology. And we're talking about what's really missing. And we both came to the same conclusion. It's really understanding human motivation. You know, why? Because what people should do is out there. We already know what we should be doing. But what's the drive that gets people to actually do it? Yeah. Right? I always tell people that there's a success formula called H cubed, that it goes from your head to your heart to your hands. That you can visualize things in your head all day, set goals in your mind, affirm things in your mind, think good thoughts and such. But if you're not acting with your hands, and we're all guilty of this, right? We've all learned something really important for our business or for our health or something yeah. like that. But we didn't actually act on it with our body and took massive action, if you will. Usually what's missing, if you find yourself like that, is the second H, which is the heart, which is all about emotion, right? The energy of motion. I had a martial arts instructor tell me years ago, you can't steer a parked car. You need fuel. So what's the fuel? What's your why? Yeah. And so I would start with that for memory. It's like I find a lot of people will remember people's names. Some people will remember people. Like we don't forget every single person's name. I think ultimately, just like with the 
importance of self-care, I think it's self-coaching, that you are the expert. Don't put responsibility out somewhere else. You are the expert because, and now here's the thing, it's not like you forget all names. You remember some names. I bet you the names that you tend to remember in your life are you have reasons to remember their name, right? Because that can be a big whale of a potential client. Maybe you're attracted to that person or what have you. There's some kind of why inherent there. So model your own genius. I would say the O for mom is very important. It's observation. Observation. A lot of people aren't forgetting the person's name. They're just not paying attention. They blame their memory. They think it's their retention. It's not their retention. It's their attention. And so that's the big issue. A lot of people, they're not present like that. You know, for example, the story I like to share with people that sticks in their minds is uh, I've had the opportunity to meet President Clinton a number of times. And he, amazing. Bill Clinton, amazing charisma, connector, communicator. Everyone knows that. A lot of people don't know. He's got an outstanding memory, mm -hmm. an outstanding yeah. memory because leaders do, right? Because they want to be experts at what they do. And you know, experts at their, their category, but also experts uh, with people. And so every time I've had the opportunity to meet uh, President Clinton, he's remembered my name, he's remembered our last conversation, he asks about things that I'm interested in. And so I ask him one day, like, how do you do this? You know, what memory techniques are you using? And he doesn't use any memory techniques. He looks at me and says, Jim, I don't use any memory techniques. And I find out that his, uh, his grandfather used to tell stories in Arkansas to the children. And, and at the end, the children, he would actually ask questions of the children, quiz the children, see if they were paying attention. Hmm. And I noticed that his incredible memory last time that you know while I was with him is there was a lot of we're at a fundraiser I was sitting at dinner and I was sitting right next to him and a lot of other people are at this table I'm talking about Forrest Whitaker where I was talking about uh, Sir Richard Branson Ashton Kutcher and his twin brother all at the table but when he's talking to me he, I noticed that something funny he, he he's not looking at anybody else you ever notice like when you're talking to somebody sometimes they're looking over your shoulder and you can tell their attention is somewhere else yeah. or maybe worse you're doing that to somebody else right. and so the challenge is so when he's talking to you you're absolutely Absolutely, there. He's not looking around in the room, even though there's many more important people at the table or in that room than I am. And he's also not, you can tell he's not talking to himself. Because a lot of people, what they're doing was they're meeting someone for the first time, they're not actually listening. They're actually thinking about how they're going to respond to the person. And if you have a conversation with you in your mind and you and somebody else, you know, you can't listen to two conversations at once. So a lot of people aren't even remembering, forgetting the name. They're just not even hearing it because mm -hmm. they're not present. And that's yeah. the thing about President Clinton. I think his powerful presence and his incredible memory comes from being powerfully present. Yeah, yeah, that's his fantastic. Powerful presence yeah. comes from powerfully present. So that's the O in observation. And finally, the last M in mom is the mechanics. And the mechanics, I'm not the per talking per person that fixes your car. These are the tips, the tools, the techniques, the strategies, if you will, to remember a person's name, to be able to give a speech without notes, to be able to remember a PIN number or a passcode or another language or what have you, where you put the car keys. You know, those are the strategies that we teach in our online programs. But I'm saying if you don't want to remember, you're not motivated to remember something, if you're not observing it to begin with, the strategies aren't going to help you. Yeah. So, Jim, what is one of those shortcuts or what your students tell you is so powerful about one of those tips for the mechanic side of things? Okay. So let's take uh, remembering names, for example. I had a client. He went down to Florida, and he met uh, – he was really nervous about this because he's not – he's very introverted and very antisocial according to him and he had to go to Florida to meet he's a lawyer he had to go meet with a client down there and the client was hosting a big gathering 150 people and he came to me and he says Jim I really need some tips on how to really quick tips on how to remember someone's name because this could be a really big deal for, for my client and also for my career and people know the importance about names is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care Right? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And people don't, they don't, they don't, how are they going to trust that you, you're going to care for their business, their future, their health, their fi your finances, whatever it is that are going to sell you, if you will, you're going to sell them if you don't care enough to just remember them, remember their name and the names of the people close to them. And so he understood that. So I give him this tip and he goes and meets these, um, as many of these 150 people as possible. And when he leaves, get this, Jeremy, he says goodbye to every single one of them by their name. Wow. And within the first couple of months, he's generated so much revenue, almost doubles his business from all the connections he makes because of that one skill. I think remembering names, number one business etiquette networking skill there is, number one. And so what I taught him is something really simple. We're talking about mechanics. Just remember this, be suave. 
really simple. Be suave. Next time you're out in an event, a conference, and an opportunity to be able to network and meet people, remember, look in the mirror, check your makeup, check your clothing, but also say to yourself, I'm going to be suave. Okay. And really quickly, be suave stands for this. The B stands for believe. Really simple because believe, because Henry Ford said, if you believe you can or believe you can't, either way, you're right. Right, yeah. right. Because here's the thing a lot of people do this, they sabotage themselves. They say, I have a horrible memory. I'm horrible remembering names. And here's the thing your mind. I was run, preparing to run a marathon, and the book, um, one of the, uh, the chapters was the psychology of running a marathon, you know, the, the thinking style, if you will. And verbatim, it says this, because I'm a memory expert, it said this. <laughs> it says, your brain is a supercomputer, and your, and your self-talk is the program that will run. So if you tell yourself you're not good with names, you will not remember the name of the next person you meet because you programmed your computer hmm. not to. And here's the thing, when you tell yourself you're not good with names, that you have a horrible memory, here's the tweetable, if you're going to tweet this, at Jim Quick, your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. Hmm. Your mind is always eavesdropping on your self-talk. So believe you can, believe you can, either way you're right, so get rid of the negative thinking. All right. The E in B suave is exercise. Exercise. I don't mean physical exercise, although a great brain hack is move your body. You know, physical exercise, as your body moves, your brain grooves. As your body moves, that's the tweetable at Jim Quick. <laughs> as your body moves, your brain grooves. And that's key because anything that's good for your heart is going to be good for your head. So people who are more physically active will be more mentally acute and more focused and their memory will be stronger. Uh, but I don't mean that. I mean that practice, exercise, practice, because practice makes progress. Practice makes progress. A lot of people think it makes perfect. I don't think there there's a standard or a level called perfection. Right. And so there's always another level. All right. So practice these techniques, and you know, so you learn it and do it, and you can practice memory names anywhere. Right. You walk into Whole Foods and you see three other people walk in and make up names. That person's Mary. That's Sue. That's Bob. And when you're checking out at the end, you see the same people. Test yourself, and that's Mary, Bob, and Sue. Right? As, the, as the phrase goes, what you, what you practice in private, you're rewarded for in public. What you practice in private, you're rewarded for in public. So yeah. make sure you practice exercise. And now here's the technique, suave, really fast. S, say it. First time you meet somebody, they give you their name, say their name. Mm. Jeremy, it's nice to meet you. Because that means you get to hear it twice. Yeah. Right? And just by hearing it twice helps you to retain it. Or also, when you say it, there's an auditory part to it. And also when you say it, it also means you going back to mom, the O, observed it. It means you really heard it correctly. Because you don't want to talk to somebody and say goodbye, eh person's name is Ted, right? You want to get corrected right up front in the conversation, right? So say the name. The you in suave is use the name and use it. Don't abuse it. Don't, J Jeremy, it's good to talk to you. Jeremy, what do you want to talk about? Jeremy, what's going to be most, Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy that being be an abuse, right? Use it three or four times in the context of the conversation because that will definitely help. And people love hearing their own name. They love it. It's the sweetest sound to a person's ears, right? The A uh, in suave is ask, ask. And this is really great for people who need somebody in their name that's unusual and different, something that you hadn't heard before. Ask about a person's name. You could ask, what's the origin? How do you spell it? Are you related to this person? Who were you named after? Yeah. Uh, what does it mean? All these great questions. So you could ask about a person's name. And that helps deepen the grooves and uh, associations in your memory for it. The V in suave stands for visualize. Visualize. And here's the fun tip about it. Uh, we tend to be much better with things we see than things that we hear, right? And because, like, you meet somebody and say, you know, I, I remember your face, but I forgot your name. You'll never go and say the opposite. You'll never go to someone and say, hey, I remember your name, but I forgot your face, <laughs> right? That right. wouldn't make any sense. Because here's the thing. There's a, there's, there's a Chinese proverb that goes, what I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. What I do, I understand. Yeah. What I hear, I forget. I heard the name, I forgot the name. What I see, I remember. I saw the face, I remember the face. And what I do, I understand, going back to practice and exercise, yeah. that's where you understand things, right? So for the V, visualize, turn the name into a picture. That's the ultimate tip, T-I-P, -T, turn into picture. Because if we tend to remember what we see, try seeing what you want to be able to remember. Yeah. So you take somebody's name, like a mic, like Mike. Imagine them singing karaoke on a microphone for a split second, jumping on the table. And then here's the thing. People say that's very childish. Who are the fastest learners around? You know, children, children right? yeah. they could pick up languages, they could pick up musical instruments so fast. They're creative. They make fun of names, right? And so that's how they learn. They're using more of, of who they are to be able to remember things. So let's say a person's name is Mark. You imagine a little check mark on their forehead. In the, in the privacy of your own mind, you're not actually doing that, right? right? Or sharing it with Mark. 
can be someone named Mary, and she's carrying two lambs underneath her arms. Or Mary had a little lamb as a reminder. Mm-hmm. Someone's named Carol. She's singing Christmas carols. Whatever you know, for Bob, I you know, I imagine apples. You know, because Bob is bopping for apples. Mm-hmm. Right? For David, I imagine a slingshot, because David and Goliath just right. imagine just hitting hitting their glasses with a slingshot or something like that. Something fun, imaginative, and new and novel. And basically, you're taking a name and you're making it more fun. And finally, the E in suave is end end conversation saying goodbye to them using their name Mm. because if you could do as one of my clients did this lawyer in florida go into a room meet 20 strangers and leave saying goodbye to every single one using their name who are they all going to remember yeah they're all going to remember you and that's 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 a standout skill yeah and you know jim i was watching the video and you took four people on stage at one of your conferences and i still remember all their names and one of them was like, was his name was Nathan, and you told people to picture like hot dogs in his beard because of like Nathan's hot dogs. You know, it just it sticks in your mind when you visualize it. So I, you know, just one of these someone could use to remember. So oh, all of them together, uh, they could use. They don't have to use every single every single thing. Just yeah. maybe you're just gonna believe you're gonna say the name and visualize it. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna use it, ask about it, and end with it. Something is better than nothing. See, all the, these techniques, what they're gonna do is to help you overcome what I call the second syndrome. You have six seconds. You get someone's name or phone number, a pin number, something. You have six seconds to do something with that information. Yeah. Otherwise, what happens? It's like gone, right? And so this helps you to focus on it, helps you to capture it. And even when it doesn't work, it still works because it gets yeah. you to really pay attention and be present with somebody. And then after you remember the person's name, for instance, this with this specific technique, then the pictures disappear because they were just a glue to help you to remember a bridge, if you will, to remember the true information as a prompt and a reminder. Yeah. So, Jim, I know you spent time with SpaceX and Elon Musk. What was something you went over with him, one of, you know, one of the greatest business minds, to give him that extra edge? Yeah, I mean, I think I learned more in the- that interaction than, than, than he did, honestly, because I'm a big fan of, of, of PayPal, of Tesla, of SpaceX, obviously, and everything that he's doing. Um, he, we, we connected at a, at, a, at a fundraiser, and we were talking, and he has actually has an extraordinary memory. Right? So I can't take credit for that. He has an extraordinary memory. Right. He could do what I could do. He could, he could take a deck of cards and shuffle them and then remember the order and all that. Extraordinary wow. uh, individual. Um, what, I, what I love about him personally is his ability to to think different for example because he has a very he could he could take something and go very zero based he could take something like tesla saying if i'm going to build a car with today's technology what would it look like not being not being biased by anything because i here's what i think here's a great book it's called the structure of scientific revolution Mm -hmm. for those who like people like to read the structure of scientific revolution basically says that all innovation and technology and every single industry usually comes from somebody outside the industry yeah because it takes somebody from the outside to look on the inside saying why why aren't you doing it this way right to be able to think and that's that's the thing with 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 learning a lot of with learning is not just is changing levels of belief. If anyone is ever in a rut, I always encourage people to get new perspective, new perspective, because usually what happens, let's say you're, you're in a rut for writing, for example, or you need to be creative and you're just, you have that block, if you will. I think perspective helps you to change things. And one of the best ways to change perspective, you know, two ways easily, is changing your place or changing people, right? Changing place. I, I was just, I just had dinner uh, two nights ago with Quincy Jones. Uh, a dear friend, and we we're talking about learning. And he's got this incredible. Uh, he, he speaks so many languages. He speaks. He could say certain phrases in twenty-three different languages wow. because he loves the idea about travel. Because he's very worldly like that. He loves new food. He loves music, obviously, in that culture. And he lo- has a love for languages and appreciation for that. But he has this phrase saying, "You have to go to know. You have to go to know." So that changing your place, your environment, if you will, changes perspective. Because I think we tend to spend the most time with that kind of thing. So spend time with different kinds of individuals, especially learning from people. I, I actually love Comp Hero. You kind of bring the Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman of high potential together. But the room is you know, leaders in fashion, leaders of technology, leaders of, of entertainment, if you will, because they learn all these things and then they cross pollinate and they get to learn from each other's industry. Yeah. And so one of the things I respect about individuals like Elon, who's able to be able to create, is their ability to come and look at things from different perspectives, to be able to solve problems, to be able to change uh, you know, big ideas, these moonshot ideas, if you will, that come from cl- the collision of new individuals and new insight and new ideas to create something brand new. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it is true. Uh, we get that creativity, and people say they do adventure walks or they just change scenery. And it also, Jim, it's hard to miss. I noticed your Twitter profile picture. It's you, Will Smith. You've done some work with Will Smith, and you've done some work with just actors, speed reading scripts and memorizing lines. What kind of things do you go in when they need to memorize this, like just long scripts and lines quickly? So for when I get to work with, with actors, uh, one of the things that they want to be able to do besides speed reading scripts is to be able to memorize their lines. And a lot of people need to be able to remember, give a speech without notes, or they need to be able to remember poetry, something verbatim, or remember lines in a script. And so that's, that's something that's very useful. For people who want to be able to do that, there's a ton of different strategies. You know, when I go on stage, it's funny, Jeremy. Like I, I'll literally be trained for 40 hours. Wow over the course of four days, if you will. So there's a lot of content on how to do that. And we put all these all this content online on, on these speed reading memory courses where people could just do it at their own pace. So it's a little bit easier. But kind of a couple of quick tips for remembering speech verbatim is um, I'm going to give you a strategy, actually. All right? And we can actually practice it right now. There's one third of your memory is predetermined by genetics and biology. All right? And so let me give you a basis for what I'm talking about. This is independent of your age, your background, your career, your diet, your level of education, your gender, anything else. Okay? But one, one third of it is biological. Two thirds is completely in your control. All right? So the reason why we get outstanding results with actors or people in politics or business leaders, if you will, or, or athletes memorizing their playbooks, what have you, is because we take a very whole approach. It's just not even whole mind. It's a whole self approach to learning. Because when you're using all of your resources, yeah. you're going to be able to do things faster and more focused and better and more long term. So, for example, a few of those things that would fall under those two thirds that's going to move the lever, if you will, we're all familiar with Pareto's principle, 80 20 rule, 80% of the rewards. The 20% I'm going to focus on are 10 things. And these are going to, what's going to unlock your superhero memory. And it's whether or not you want to memorize a script or learn another language or learn to learn to play piano, learn any subject or skill faster. Okay, so what I'm looking at is a good diet. All right, and what I'm looking at is killing ants, automatic negative thoughts, where you talk about beliefs and getting rid of those negative thoughts. What I'm thinking about is exercise. We talked about that already. What I'm thinking about is brain nutrition. Sometimes we don't get all the nutrition out mm -hmm. of our foods, if you will, so you need to be able to supplement. What mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, number five, is a positive peer group. Huge. What we're finding about is your brain potential is not just about your neural networks, it's also about your social networks. Who you spend time with is who you become. So who's going to challenge you? Who's going to educate you? Who's going to encourage you? Right? And so that's going to be important for your memory. And six, clean environment. Clean environment because we find that your external world is a reflection of your internal mind. But also, seven is sleep. We have an epidemic of sleeplessness. Yeah. Sleep is so important for your memory because that's where you're consolidating short to long term memory. Just like when you're working out, you're not work you're not building your muscles when you're working out. You're building them when you rest. So you need your memories the same way. It needs to be able to rest. So sleep. The eight is brain protection. A lot of people, it's a default to their memory is they're not protecting their brain. They're doing a lot of extreme sports or activities and they're getting concussions or not, they're not wearing a helmet. Number uh, nine, eight, nine, if you will, is new learnings. And this is the most important one out of the 10, new learnings. Because your brain is like a muscle. It grows stronger with you. challenges. We live in this digital because we're, we're relying on our phones to do that for us. And so if your brain is, your phone's getting all the exercise, but your mind is not. And so a lot of ways, if I took my arm, I put it into a sling for six months, it won't grow stronger. Right. It'll just atrophy, right? right. It'll, grow, it'll grow weaker. And that's a lot of people's brain. And they call it digital dementia, right? Digital dementia. Because they're basically saying your smartphones are making us stupid. And that's the big challenge. Also, on a side note, I was just at an Alzheimer awareness event and I was talking to one of the doctors there and they're saying that, uh, that one of the challenges is with technology is we're using a device to get us from here to there, left and right and everything that we're not realizing when we would normally have memory lapses. So we're not going to the doctor to get it checked out. So we're not getting early detection mm. of some of these brain aging challenges because people aren't realizing they're having these flaws um, and these challenges these problems. So that would be, so my, my thing is new learns, learn new things. Because every time you have a new thought, you make a new connection. It's like exercise for your brain. So challenge yourself. And then finally, number 10 is stress management. Huge. 
because when you're stressed, you create cortisol, you create adrenaline, which yeah. is really good for your body for fight or flight. Yeah. But it's not really good if you need to study. It's not really good if you need to give a presentation. It's not really good if you need to prepare for a meeting. And that's the big challenge. So one of the things that we would do, whether it's helping actors remember na- uh, lines or helping remember names or anything in between, is getting this whole lifestyle. Because when I mention those 10, think about the areas that you're not, because this is, I don't think anyone would argue about those 10 things. Yeah. Right? Because I think it's pretty intuitive for people. Yeah. You notice that when you're not getting enough sleep, your memory's not as good. Good. Yes. You know, when you're hanging out with people that aren't challenging you, you're getting a little lazy about, about your mind. If you're not yeah. learning new things, if you're not getting a good diet in your food, if you're not being active. Yeah. But which of the areas you need to improve on? Very simple coaching, right? You're self reflective yeah. here. Look, look in those areas. Are you not managing your stress? Are you not reading every single day? Are you not protecting your brain? Are you not, you know, controlling your negative thoughts? I'll talk if you will, those ants, if you will. Yeah. And so one of the techniques that, let me combine that, take those 10, 10 things and I'll teach you one of the things that actors will use or politicians will use or founders will use to give a presentation without notes. Let's say you had to give a presentation on these 10 things and you want to be able to re- rehearse them and memorize them and more specifically in the order that they were received, all right? For example, you maybe you can remember some of the ten people you remember, usually remember four or five of them, but it's really difficult to remember them in order. Right. So what I'm going to teach you as a final technique is this uh, location method, and it's uh, the loci method was it's attributed to a Greek order named Simonides 2,500 years ago, and what he did was he was giving a poetry reading in ancient Greece, and after he was done, something really tragic happened. The building collapsed and killed everyone there. Holy cow. He had, yeah, and he had the responsibility of coming back and helping the family members identify their loved ones. And he was able to do oh, so based on where they were sitting. You know what I mean? Like have you, when, you, when you have a dinner with someone or you will go to a movie, you remember who is around you in your yeah. environment. Because through hunter-gatherer, through evolution, we know where things are. We don't, we don't need to remember numbers or vocabulary and stuff like that. What we need to remember were, were, where, the, where the good food was, where the enemy tribe was, you know, where the clean water is, to know where things are. And it's even our language. Even when we forget someone's name, we ask ourselves, where do I know the person from? Right? Because the where provides the context yeah. for the name. Right? And so what this, what this means is, going back to Simon, is able to remember where everyone's sitting, where they were, is take a familiar place that you're, a place that you're familiar with, like your home, your office, and, and put landmarks, little locations around the room. And like, let's say you look around and say, okay, we're in the kitchen. The microwave is number one, the stove is number two, the refrigerator is number three, the dishwasher is number four, and the sink is number five. And what you're going to do is you're going to put these things that you want to remember, little keywords, in those five places. And then you go to the next room and say, okay, the fireplace is number six, the bookshelf is number seven, the cat stand is number eight, the television is number nine, and the couch is number ten. And then put six through ten there. And so let me give everyone a really, really quick example that's yeah. just like a little north of New York City and it's suburbia. Imagine the plane lands in the airport, a car picks you up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna help everyone find ten places in my office and we'll do it together. Okay. So we'll make yeah. this interactive. And if, if it's safe, everyone could just uh, take a deep breath and close their eyes. And if it's if you can't close your eyes, don't do that. If you're obviously if you're driving you have <laughs> right. please don't yeah. disclosure. So really quickly, imagine you land you land, car picks you up, you go to my office, big glass building, first place is the parking lot. I want you to imagine you're getting out of the parking lot, and number one thing you want to remember for your super brain, good diet. You start eating a big buffet of good food, diet food, all right? Good diet for your brain. Walnuts, avocados, maybe uh, maybe fish, oils, and everything else like that. You're eating good diet. Second thing, imagine you're going, there's a bridge, because there's a little uh, uh, moat around the building from waterfall. You cross the bridge, and as the second place is the bridge, you start killing ants. You just start stepping on ants, killing ants, automatic negative thoughts, imagine yourself doing that. You go into the building, go into the third place, it's the elevator. You enter the elevator, and all of a sudden you start exercising, to remind you of exercising. Imagine you're doing P90X, CrossFit, yoga in, the, in there. You're there with Tony Horton. Good. You get out of the elevator, the fourth place is the hallway. And I want you to imagine big bottles of brain vitamins coming at you, and you're jumping over the bi- bi- vitamins, vitamin Bs, and your fatty acids, all that. You open the door to my office, immediately to the left, I want you to imagine it's a closet. You open the closet, your fifth place. Inside the closet is your positive peer group. Happy friends in there, all in the closet. Let's remind you. <laughs> right. Go from the closet to the sixth place with this receptionist, and the receptionist is sixth place, and the receptionist is cleaning the environment, cleaning the whole environment, cleaning OCD, bleaching everything, cleaning the environment. Behind the receptionist is the eighth, is the uh, seventh place, which is the fish tank, and the fish are all sleeping. To remind you to sleep. See Nemo in there wearing his pajamas and his book bed, and he's sleeping. The eighth place you go to is the door. Maybe you're taking a speed reading class, the door's locked. Put on your helmet, find your brain protection. 
you headbutt the door open, it splinters everywhere, shatters, you get inside the brain protection helmet. And then finally, number nine and ten, ninth place is right in front of you, the whiteboard. And right there, it's me, remind you of new learnings, new learnings. And I'm actually writing the word new learnings on the whiteboard, favorite color marker. And then finally, on the side, the tenth place is bonsai trees, all these little Japanese plants. And what you remember, stress management, stress management. Imagine you're getting a massage on the bonsai trees. You're meditating on top of the bonsai tree. And so what we did is we took really quickly, it took less than two minutes, 10 places in my office before I remember all the places, 10 points to a speech. Put one in the first place, second in the second place, then the third place. And by the way, if you're saying that, like in the first place, this, in the second place, that, and the third, that actually came, you know, in the languaging, that they came from the technique 2,500 years ago, where people used to, before they had iPhones, before there was printing presses and everything else, teleprompters, they used to put their memories in places to help them to recall things, right, in your home or in your office. There's so many more questions, but, uh, you know, like where you came from, it wasn't always this easy for you. People should look up that story because, you know, some of the high moments for you, some of the paths, you know, that you saw results. I mean, there's this great story of you telling about um, what motivated someone in 30 days to read 30 books. Um, yeah, and I, I, could, I could really quickly, um, my, my passion is helping people to learn faster because when I do these demonstrations on stage, I always tell people, I if you could do it, I, if I could do it, you could do it. Because I grew up with learning challenges. A lot of people don't know that. When I was like, when I was when I was a child, I took a really bad fall, had head trauma, created all these learning challenges, and all through school up to college, I had the learning difficulties. And what got me out of it was one day, in order to compensate, I'm just working so much harder than everybody else. I pull all nighters. I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't sleep. I ended up passing out at the library. I fell down a flight of stairs mm. and I hit my head again. I woke up in the hospital. I was down to 117 pounds. Jeez. I was hooked up to all these IVs, and uh, I just thought there had to be a better way. And it made me really start researching adult learning theory and, what, and uh, multiple intelligence. I want to know how my brain works so I can work my brain. 60 days into uh, studying things like speed reading, all these things, a light switch went on. I started to understand things. It's like my genius switch that people have. I think everybody has it. And all of a sudden, the grades improved and my life improved. But after getting such incredible results, I started getting really upset that why didn't everyone know this stuff? And I started to teach people and teaching friends and, and tutoring people. And one of my very first students, she was a freshman, she read 30 books in 30 days. And going back to motivation, like what's your motivation? Her motivation was her mother was dying of terminal cancer, was given 60 days to live. And the books she was reading were books to save her mom's life. Right. And huh. she ended up saving her mother's life. And uh, her mother, you know, re attributed 100% of the great advice she got from her daughter. But that instilled inside of me saying that knowledge is, is power. And if knowledge is power, then learning is your superpower. Right. And, uh, and so I wanted to really get this out to people. And I never want people, if you're watching this, and you're struggling, you're overwhelmed, and feel like you're overworked, and you can't think straight, and your focus is everywhere, and you can't keep up, too much to read, too little time. It's not your fault. We all have this 20th century education that prepared us for a world that doesn't exist anymore. We live in a 20s, we're talking about Elon, right? Electric cars, spaceships going to Mars. But how we actually learn is like a horse and buggy. It's a horse and carrot because the education system hasn't changed greatly over the past 100 years. And so what I want to do is bring some of these techniques, more of these techniques to individuals because the faster you can learn, the faster you can earn. And I don't just mean financial treasures. I mean all the treasures, your, your health, your relationships, your career, the things that give you the most fulfillment. And that all comes from understanding how your mind works. And the more you can do it, the faster you can catch up, keep up, and also just get ahead. And that's really, you know, what, it, what it's all about. Yeah. You know, Jim, you've been so, you know, gracious with your time. I really appreciate it. I know you have to get to a meeting. Um, people should check out quicklearning.com, K-W-I-K, learning. That is his actual real name. Um, and any, any last words, Jim? I want to thank you, Jeremy, you and all your uh, your viewers and listeners who've gotten here. Um, I have a story that I tell. Um, we don't have time for it now, but it has to do with the cast of the X-Men. Yeah. And you could go to my Facebook page, yeah. my personal Facebook page. It's my cover photo. You'll see a picture of me and the entire cast uh, Days of Future Past, the latest X-Men movie. But there's a lesson in that story if you're able to read it. And one of them is about going in the future and, and going back in the past and giving yourself advice. And my question for to leave everybody is this, is what if you were given these incredible superpowers and you weren't taught how to use them? What if you have real superpowers inside your inside of you, your mind superpowers, if you will, but no one told you how to use them? And uh, I'm here to say that you have these powers, that yeah. they're, they're given to you, no matter your age, your background, 
or your career, your your IQ or anything. And I would get really insanely curious. A lot of the times when we get older, I the last the last thing I want to share with people is this: is I, recently I got to introduce two of my superheroes, my mentors, together over dinner, and it was Richard Branson. Uh, who I really do believe that he has this belief that businesses can be a force for good, and I believe the same thing. And uh, introduce him to Stan Lee, yeah. Stan Lee, the creator of X Men and Spider Man and Avengers. And when I'm in the car with Stan picking him up, he asks me this very simple question: well, "Who's your favorite superhero?" And he tells me it's Iron Man. And he asks me who my favorite superhero is, and I say it's Spider Man. Yeah. And he, without a blink, he goes, "With great power comes great responsibility." Right. And I tell him, you know, Stan, that's right. With great power comes great responsibility. And the opposite is also true. With great responsibility uh, comes great power. Like when we take responsibility for yeah. our life, we have great power to change things in our life. Yeah. And so in what areas can we take more responsibility for? And I would say a great place to start is with our own brain and learn, learn that. And, you know, Stan has two passions in his life, talking about motivation, right? He still goes to work. He's just turned, we just celebrated his 92nd birthday. Wow. He still goes to work Monday through Friday, nine to five, because he loves storytelling. And his other passion is for his wife, who's 93 years old. And Stan is, he's 92 years old, going on 93 this year, but he's like the youngest, oldest guy I know. Yeah. And I really think that when we talk about responsibility and, and who you are uh, as a person, is, you know, we said the children learn so quickly. I don't mean chronological age. I mean the age of your mind and the age of your heart. Yeah. Because Stan is also one of the most brilliant people who learn and so creative. Yeah. Is own that and be in, and and stay with that. And yeah. I would I would encourage people to find that childlike center. And my story about the X Men, which you could read on my cover photo on on Facebook, it's just at Jim Quick there. Yeah. It's, it's all about how to maintain that childlike curiosity and trading your cleverness for curiosity. Yeah. Jim, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate your time and thank yeah. you everyone for joining us. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, like a beach.